Hi, thanks again for joining us back at another episode, this bonus episode of the Financial Grill. This is part two of the first part where we talked about financial, uh, our financial stories through our family trauma and our shared experiences and just our ideas about where this is going in the future and so on and so forth. As always, it's always a pleasure to share uh, our uh, background, our history, and our confidence through our you know, collective journey. So ultimately, I hope this kind of resonates with you and your friends, your families, and loved ones. As again, I am your um, host, Lawrence Gonzalez, uh, always joined with Alana Alsen, as well as lovely Mel Blues, and we are the Financial Grill. This is part two. Yeah, that's a whole deep story, man. That story is so interesting to me. Like, in not because I've lived it, but it's almost like externally when I spread, you know, sp- spread it back out again. Just look at the universe of every circumstance and how people interact. Yeah. You end up seeing why so much of my my entire family is fractured because of that one instant. Because you know she what? couldn't deal with it. Like my mom couldn't deal with it, but she still loved them. While my grandfather is more like authoritarian, a little bit more like me, I'm like, oh, this guy's behind. I'm gonna go do what I gotta do. You know, he's more like that. But my my mom neutered him, like she didn't want him to do any of that. So he kind of distanced himself from her, mentally, psychologically. Dads don't, dad can't process, you know, like living in an in an unresolved scenario. So sometimes, like he has other kids, so he just cut her off, like mentally. Until this, like, well, to his dying day, whatnot, she still never got the 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 love and affection that she kept on craving from her dad ever since. Some deep stuff. Yeah. And then, and then it became a, a double edged sword because she still lost her husband. Yeah. Comes not necessarily a black sheep in the family, but it's like that scarlet letter. In yeah. The she she becomes a black sheep, but because she is also the oldest, remember how the, the everybody kind of models everything else. Yeah. A lot of the other ones afterwards either don't get married at all, you know, become, you know, they basically don't, they just become scared of everything. And the other ones also end up being in, in very fractured, you know, basically toxic relationships and never married. Wow. Does your uncle end up staying with the wife? Yeah, I'm curious. Uh, yeah, the the yeah, he stays. He went back. He stayed with his wife. But I and I didn't, I didn't know all these details till later. And then every once in a while, you see like a new person say, "Hey, that's um someone's that's your cousin and that's your that's your uncle's daughter." I'm like, "Oh, what the hell?" I'm like, mm, I, I guess. But then you wouldn't see you'd see like a wife, and then you wouldn't see the. Ki- but ultimately, to say that he had multiple kids outside his own marriage, because he also became psychologically impotent impotent or something if a woman cheats on you it messes you up as a guy so, yeah like everybody, everybody shock okay. face everybody you get no no i think face. that's right it's, it's, it's not surprising i think that's for both genders. yeah it's for both genders but for guys they become like he still loves his wife technically but because of this infidelity he kind of like you know goes on his own tangent to try to figure himself out so they move away from this traditional very christian very focused kind of family and all devolves into this other thing into very much chaos and i didn't understand that until the one day i was in haiti i think my yeah my sister was getting no my cousin was getting married my sister's coming into town and my and that's a whole other story my dad i haven't seen him like pretty much forever you know every, i only saw him once and i saw him again that time and there was a knock at the door my cousin who is my uncle's son, second son, he's there and he's in the living room. He's like, and, and usually somebody opens the gate, but in those weird sense of like, you know, like universal karma, nobody's opening the gate and you hearing somebody, ba- you know, pound on the gate. I'm like, who the hell would be doing this? Right. And I'm like, ah, this is messed up. I'm going to go, my cousin didn't want it, um, to go open the door. And I was like, all right, I'm going to go open the door. I go to open the door. For one, I'm about to say, who the F this guy is, you know, like whatever, it's in Haiti. All this thing is happening in Haiti, Port-au-Prince. So I'm, I'm about to, you know, like, cause our family is very respected. People respect us in the community. Nobody's going to knock on our gate like this. Nobody has the certain level of like, you got to have some level of respect and decency. You can't just be knocking on somebody's door like this. And I open the door, the, the maid lady starts like running. It's like, oh, cause she's kind of apologizing like she wasn't in time to open the door. And I'm like, it's cool. And the guy, oh, I open the door and the guy barely acknowledges anything. He's like, um, I need to go to the, you know, what the, the, 
the cool, you know, like like I, the, uh, you know, um, the you know, the, the middle of the house. Forget what that is. That center, like open space, right? The backyard or whatever you want to call Down it. Down there, yeah, what? Yeah, like right. It's just a laku, or, yeah, the laku, laku, like laku, that. laku, laku. Yeah, that, that's a laku. Okay. So the guy passes by. He doesn't even utter much anything, and I'm looking at it. I'm like, who the? F-? Like in my mind, I'm processing this really quickly. He passes by. The only thing I remember about him st- technically is kind of this rat tail ponytail thing that he has in the back of his head. Like he passes me, the the lady's coming in. She's like, "Who is that?" And I already know that that's my dad. Like it's I don't have to. He didn't have to say anything to me to, because I don't. He don't even know how I really look or anything. He doesn't care. But I know the only person that would disrespect this house at this level can only be one person that that's damaging to the point where he comes to the door, knocks like a, like a bat out of hell, doesn't give two crap about like, you know, formal introductions because he dis- he already destroyed this house. Does it make any sense? Yeah, he yeah literally. And I'm like, this guy, by virtue of what he was allowed to do through my mom and, you know, basically nobody checked him for it. He has zero respect for this place. So he comes in with that level of stuff. And even then while he walks in my, my, my cousin, eventually kind of picks his head up or I think he was playing video games or something like that. I think he recognizes him and he kind of like, you could feel like my cousin kind of like sink into the couch and stay within the living room because he, it's almost like he has an effect on everybody here. So my mom comes back to me in like the kitchen area and she's like, oh, you know, let it, you know, like whatever, um, you know, it's, it's your dad, you know, be nice, whatever it is, just be nice to him and stuff like that. And I'm looking at her like, why would I be nice to this person? Why would I allow, like, it doesn't make any sense. Like I said, I'm more like my grandfather in that sense. Like, I'm like, I don't get what you guys don't see. This guy has no respect for you. He has no respect for this house. He shouldn't even be allowed to even get to the point where he's up here. If not at all, he needs to get the hell back out, you know, and come back in the right way. So I'm like, okay, for her, I'm just going to let this slide. And as she's kind of like, oh, and she's doing, she, we eventually go to Lalaku in the inside. Some of the aunties are doing their hair because you know, somebody's getting married that weekend. And some of the kids there, my goddaughter's there. And, you know, things going on. All the guys left that day. It was weird, too. Like, my grandfather left. My uncles left. It was just everything about that day was very strange. You like, you could feel that that moment. And it just was very strange day. I'm chilling out there. eh, Whatever. And then he's trying to tell me, oh, because my mom tells me, oh, that's your son. She's like, oh, shoot. Like, it's like a person that, that, so your son of whatever, 20 plus years, like, you're more like, oh, shit, my bad. Like, (laughs) that was his, like, case. Like, oh, my bad. Who, who is this guy? Like, it, it was just the most messed up thing ever. Like, you don't even know who your son is. You don't know anything. And he's like, oh, it's, it's like, oh, yeah, it seems like you're doing well. That kind of like attitude, very smug, very like laissez faire. Like, oh, shoot, my bad. Like, in my mind, all the things I'm like, I process life without you. All the stuff I had to go through, all the stuff I had to go through with my mother because of you, all that stuff. And yet you just come in and walks in like it's all good. As if, and the only reason he walks in is because that day he was told that my sister was going to come fly into town. She wasn't there yet, but that's why he showed up. So when he was trying to, you know, I guess shake my hand and stuff like that, he tried to do the, the, uh, 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 a squeeze. And I'm looking at him like, is this it? This, this is this, this is the material, the genetic material that I come from. Thank you. I'm looking at my mom like, thank you. Like, this is the best you could have done. Like, sperm this donor. is it. <laughs> yeah, like, this is the sperm donation that you, you decided to give me. This weak guy that doesn't have much to, you know, to give to the world or anything like that. And he's trying to squeeze my hand. I'm looking at him. And I, I started squeezing back. And I started, and I started to think, I'm like, hmm, this is interesting. I could almost break his hand. So I just kept on squeezing his hand until he's like, he started getting like, I guess he started feeling pain. So he, he started like, ah, 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 you know, he, he's, try, he's trying to like worm his way out this thing. I was going to break his hand. If not, I was going to break his entire arm. And the ladies were basically trying to um, protect them for some reason. So oh, let him go. It's okay. You doesn't have to do that. He's gonna, like, I'm looking at them like, what the hell's wrong with you people? And I was literally to the point where I, I was going to really break his arm. 
And the only thing that saved me, and I think I, I actually did sink into a place of proverbial darkness, per se, like the void, where you just, all the anger, all the animosity, all the gears kind of boiled up to that point. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to hurt this guy a lot. A lot, a lot. I'm, 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 I, and I'm just gonna keep going. And I'm gonna toss him into this room. And I'm gonna hurt him some more, like, because you know, after that, I was in the Marine Corps as well. I'm like, yo, I, we, I could have a good time here, man. This is what I'm gonna do. The only thing that saved him in that moment, because the ladies can't really do anything to me, like size wise, strategy wise, none of that. So the only thing that saved him was, you know, like a couple of hits on my feet, on my like my my I don't say not not the thigh, but like uh, my calf. Something was just hitting me on my calf and I just kind of snapped too. And it was my goddaughter because she never seen me angry. Mm. So because of it, I just kind of like, I looked down and I, and I let him go and I grabbed her because I didn't, you know, she was mad at me about it and whatnot, but because she didn't, she didn't understand what's going on. She was seeing, she was seeing people yelling. She was being, she saw me unhappy. All of it was just not good. And she's a, she's pretty much an empath as well. So I, I had to like, I let him go and he, he took off. He, he left and he never came back. He, he, it's, it's like the weirdest thing. It's like, it's like a little super villain. He kind of, like, he ran off. Like the moment he saw like the, a way out, he just, he couldn't even stay to confront any situation because he's, he's not man enough. And I told my sister later on, cause she's like, oh, I'm gonna be married. He's gonna walk me down the aisle and stuff like that. I was so like, that's the dumbest thing I ever heard. And if that's the case, I'm not gonna be there. I'm not gonna be in a place in which you honor somebody that's done nothing. Like, I cannot be in that kind of space. And it's like, oh, no, I want you to be there. I'm like, even if I'm the place, and eventually she tried to talk me into it. She eventually didn't get married or whatnot, but she tried to talk me into it. I was like, you know what, I'll be in the place, but just know that when he, when he, when he comes into the place, he, he addresses me at yes, sir, no, sir. And he never makes eye contact. Like, he, he keeps it down there. Like, he's not man enough to look at me. Like, the moment it happens, I'm going to whoop his ass. <laughs> like, that's, that's my instinct. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm literally going to... Because it's the reason I would do so is because he damaged my entire family irrevocably, you know, to the point where on, until I understood what he did, all my family, the way that they process, the way that they move, he destroyed them from the inside like a cancer. And they don't get it. And I think my, my grandfather got it. He didn't like it, but he was forced to kind of capitulate himself to the whims of you know other people where I, I personally will never there's this is something I will never do like this guy is worthy of nothing and that's why my last name is Delvin Gonzalez now Whew, what a story that was a story but there's so much to take away I, I, don't, I don't even bother doing wrap up I'm gonna let you as a listener and take that process that and 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 you make your own wrap up because that is there's so much to talk about in it and that it would require a whole other episode and there's something uh, I will leave with this there needs to be um I think what I love about what Lawrence talked about was the rawness of like the domino effect of someone coming in whether sometimes it's in the family causes this rift and oftentimes we protect the abuser we protect the person that has literally put a fire to the building, not realizing that this is where you take a stance. And if that stance was taken, like, let's go back in the story, rewind. And your grandfather was allowed to make a, make a statement, to make a, not a statement. We're going to use the term statement, but we know he wasn't trying to make a statement. But let's make a statement with his actions. I really do feel like maybe there's a, there's, now there's a, a code there's a law of family that happens. Like you're not going to come into this family and just destroy. You're not going to come in here and do these things without recourse. And because it was kind of like placated, it became a bigger thing, even though it became, it, it became a silent killer. It's like the conversation that's not have, but everybody knows that this is where this stems from. This is where the seed of like blowing up this thing essentially comes from. And it's, it's, it's to say that there is a lot of internal work that we have to do and as well as, oh, there's a lot of internal work that we have to do, but as well as take a stance in our family because we, and we need to understand what can make a family structure thrive and also what can destroy a family structure. And I think there's a lot to, to unwrap there, but man, you're a great storyteller, Lawrence. 
um you know i wish it was just a, it literally you was know? the entire i remember the entire day and before and this is the trippiest part before when i met my goddaughter i when i it's so it's weird because even when i met her and i looked at her and her part of her story is kind of like similar to mine as far as being the second born and dad being toxic and all that good stuff um or bad stuff per se um ultimately it's like somewhere along the way of me babysitting or raising her as a toddler toddler I realized that she was going to be the only thing that could stop me from doing something bad like I if anything I even had you know what the Haitians call a, a dream a lev <laughs> like the, like literally the lev like in the, in like a walkway in the same walkway in Haiti in which like for some reason she stopped me from doing something and later on when it was happening it was the only thing that I can remember is like wow like I was whatever I thought about process through, yes, she was the only one that could stop me from doing something to my family. Like something, you know, me, you know, something violent, something you know, messed up, some whatever, like she's the only one that could. And to this day, I owe her that much. Like one day I'll tell her the story, obviously, but I owe her that much. I don't think she knows it. She doesn't get it until she has to go through her own trials, her own tribulations, her own things. But ultimately to let her know that everybody, every kid has a purpose. Every kid has a, a, you know, a, 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 you know, they're, they're born to the world for a reason, right? And some of those reasons is to placate us. Some of those reasons is to bring us back to reality, to balance us out, to realize that, you know, life isn't about making the billions of the trillions or the millions. Sometimes it's about, you know, taking time and really enjoying and really having one-on-one -on -one and maybe even enjoying ice cream with your kids. You know, those little things do matter. And I think that's how we bring this entire thing full circle. I see Atlanta, you went out there, you got a little bit of a cry out there. You cried a little bit. It's all right. I'm actually taking a phone call from family. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, damn, all right, never mind. Okay, Cold. speaking of family, taking a phone you know? call. <laughs> but yeah, that was the story though. So I guess that's where we land for this episode, guys. Yeah, this was an extensive one. Yeah, I yeah. <laughs> I'll put trigger, warning, trigger warnings in the captions when we do write this out. Because it was like a lot what, what we do, right? When Lawrence writes this out, we, <laughs> no, we, the team, <laughs> like that's how the boss says, we write this out, but the <laughs> boss looks at you, like you. We all do it. Um, but no, I think um, I, I do want to say this uh, to, to a point that Lawrence said, and we'll wrap up this episode that there are going to be moments that things kind of come into big picture. And I think the whole um, situation where you're saying you're, you know, you see, you feel something tapping tapping on your calves and it's like yo what's going on what's you know and it, and it, it kind of changed the story to me I always call those moments God moments where God's like I, I know I know how you feel I get it but I don't want you to do this because you, you I don't want you to do that there's other ways that this comes full circle for you and I I, I feel the emotions do what you have to do but I'm going to stop it right here I'm going to really make a pause. This is where, you know, heaven is like, pause it, pause it, send the little baby. Like <laughs> this needs to happen. He needs to understand what he's caused. And I think, I think your dad probably got that in that moment that, oh crap, I'm in trouble, you know, <laughs> but essentially, essentially it ends up causing this full circle moment for you. And I think I love the fact that you didn't allow this to stop you from saying, hey, I'm never going to get married. I'm not going to have children. I'm not going to do these things. I'm not going to become who I need to be because God is actually working a new family story through your, through your lineage. That is the restoration. That is the power of full circle where the healing comes from now that you get to now create a whole different narrative, even though your family genesis does not come from that. You get to create a new genesis. And so I hope every li listener understands no matter what you've gone through, you are the new genesis for a new legacy and a new story, a new family story and take with that with pride because it could have ended a complete other way. We can't, we're not applauding what happened. We're not okay with it. We're not saying this is great things, but this is where, you know, God does his best work is showing you that Delva Gonzalez legacy doesn't have to be what the Gonzalez legacy of your dad was. And that's the beauty of that whole God being in the mix and intervening and showing you, I get it, it hurts, but here you are creating a whole different legacy with bougie kids, privileged kids, like out here 
and a present father and a, a you know, wonderful mom. And so um, kudos to you, God, on this episode <laughs> for stopping and bringing everything full circle. And I hope every listener knows that you are the new genesis of your family line. Thank you for listening to the Financial Griot Podcast, powered by the Wealth Builders Collective.